we are going to be installing something that's gonna give us practically free heat in the boat and that is this thing here what is it it's what they call a bus heater it's basically the same thing as what your cars have and it's very simple so you connect this to the engine coolant loop the coolant goes in um, and out uh, through these pipes doesn't matter which one is which on this one and then the coolant gets circulated through these pipes here and obviously this is going to become very hot and then there is a fan that blows air through and it's going to um, blast hot air out of here and on this particular one there is also a cover plate like this so you could attach some ducting here if you wanted to a pretty simple product only costs like a couple hundred bucks and running it is practically free of course you need to run the engine but um, when you are running the engine a diesel engine it produces a lot of heat a lot of wasted heat in the arctic unfortunately we quite often end up motoring so it's nice to be uh, getting some practically free heat and this product is something that i have not installed before i haven't had this on any of my previous boats so it's gonna be interesting to see how they work the heater itself is gonna get placed under that settee over there in the back and the reason that I'm uncovering the engine is that because we need to open the coolant loop in order to in install the uh, heater, some coolant is going to come out, so I'm going to do a coolant change at the same time. Let's go! Now with the table removed you can see that we have pretty good access to the engine or actually excellent access to the engine and that is both a plus and a minus on this boat you know once you remove the table you have really good ac access but if you don't remove the table it's not that great anyway i'm gonna try to drain the old coolant now i don't really know for sure where all of the drain points are i tried to look in the manual but it's pretty useless so this is not going to be a, an instruction, instructional part of this video at all. I have uh, no idea what I'm doing. On this engine, there is a separate coolant circuit for the hot water heater and that's what we're going to use for this um, air heater as well and that's these two hoses one of them is for the coolant going into the heater and the other one is for going out so what we're gonna do is i'm just gonna use the dinghy pump to pump into this line just need the dinghy pump and plenty of uh, plenty of duct tape and um, pressurize this line and then that means that the coolant is going to flow into the engine and empty at least most of this line now we just want to get it as empty as possible to get most of the old coolant out of course someone else might have a compressor or something but i don't have any of that So this is where I'm going to be putting the heater and uh, this might look like a mess to some of you but I just call it the technical technical section of the boat you know the heater itself is gonna be bolted into this wall here and then it's gonna blow air through into this space uh, we need to make a few holes on this side and uh, yeah those two over there with the orange stripes those hoses are the coolant hoses and they go to the water heater which is back there should be pretty simple i did have to modify the mounting arrangement for this a little bit because i didn't realize that it's supposed to be mounted on the floor 
and not on a bulkhead so I changed the mounting arrangement a little bit and now it should be fine now I'm going to guesstimate the location for this it's gonna be something like this here The important part is that it fits. I'm not going to show you many details of the installation because there's really not that much to it. Here I'm attaching the front plate back to the heater and then I mount the unit using the holes that I made earlier. After that I cut one of the coolant hoses that go to the water heater and connect it so that the coolant now flows through this bus heater as well. On this particular unit the direction of the flow doesn't matter, but some units have a defined inlet and outlet. I chose to shorten the control knob wiring loom just because it was way too long for me, but the electrical installation is otherwise very simple. You just need to connect a positive and a negative lead and of course use an appropriate fuse. In this case I used a 15 amp circuit breaker. All right, the installation is ready. Those are the outlets here, obviously. I made a bit of a mess with the hole saw, but that's all right. And that's the control knob here. And when I turn this, that's low, medium, high, and it's quite loud. But that's all right, it's next to the engine anyway. Good morning. It's rainy and gray outside, and there's no wind either. So it's a perfect day to test this heater because we are most probably going to be motoring to our next anchorage. I will leave it off now for the first 15 minutes of motoring because I want the engine to warm up before I turn this on. <laughs> We are underway and I turned the heater on and there is not much to report, you know, I could have gone downstairs and show you how I turned the knob, but that's basically all you can see. After you turn the knob, once the engine has been on for 10 minutes, um, you know, it, it blows warm air and a lot of it. So the good thing about that is that the fan is, it seems very powerful, it blows a lot of air and uh, it's warm air and uh, that's pretty much all that there is to it. I don't really see many downsides to this thing. Uh, it's a pretty simple installation. As long as it doesn't start leaking, it's pretty safe as well. Um, I probably will add some uh, valves to the coolant line so that I can um, close the coolant flow to the uh, to this heater and to the water heater so that if something starts leaking then I can just close the valves. I think that's a pretty good um, safety measure even if you only have just um, 
uh, water heater. You know, just getting the air moving inside the boat is pretty nice. It keeps the boat um, dry. That's that's even more important than keeping the boat warm. So, and for hours, the way it's installed, it pulls in air from kind of the bilge and the lazarette area. So it's actually connected to the aft lazarette. So it's pulling in um, fresh outside air from there. And um, outside air, even when it's uh, moist, if it's cold outside air, then it's gonna be drier than the air that we have inside the boat usually. So it's gonna dry off the boat pretty well. Next up, we're gonna go and anchor. It's our first anchorage in Canada. And I think this is gonna be a pretty tight entrance. It looks really uh, kind of uh, sketchy on the map actually, but it's one of the popular anchorages here. Uh, although this time of the year, we are probably gonna be alone or at least it's not gonna be that crowded. We just need to dodge these cargo ships that are anchored here. And then we are pretty much over there. This is where we are going. Annet Inlet, this tiny inlet here. Our guidebook says it's the local favorite. Let's see how we get in. It's somewhere. Somewhere in there. Mene ankkuri paikka. Ei hän ole. Kanadassa. Kanadassa. <laughs> Joo. Mä oon nämä tämmösiä. Fistpan. Okay, after all of this, we have used the heater now for a couple more days and I just wanted to give you the final verdict. So first of all, you might need to be careful about how much heat you are rubbing from your engine. Especially if you have uh, the he the, this heater and a water heater in the same coolant loop. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem really if your thermostat on the engine is working fine, but um, some people have engines that naturally tend to run quite cool and especially if you run your engine at really low rpms at idle and so on then you should watch out for this like you probably shouldn't run it at full power if you are just idling your engine we don't have a, a temperature gauge on our engine so i can't say for sure um, what the effect on our engine is i do have an external uh, temperature um, like an infrared uh, thing that i use to check the temperature on the engine and I don't think it has an effect on our engine but it's just something to keep in mind. I usually don't turn the heater on until the engine has been on for like 10-15 minutes. Second, all of these heaters they are like uh, car versions. They're originally made for cars. So when you buy one you probably want to make sure that it's not in a metal casing because that's gonna be mild steel and that's gonna rust. So ours, the one that I have here, is just plastic. It's just fully plastic. It's kind of a little bit bendy and so on. It's not really super sturdy, um, but um, it's not gonna rust. This one is from summitracing.com, um, but I've seen the same heater marketed under the, under the name Maradine or something like this, and it seems like there's maybe couple of manufacturers that actually make them and then they get marketed under different brand brand names and this one it only cost 170 bucks with with everything including the control knob and so on 
third um, the heating power uh, so this one is nominal 28,000 BTUs or around 8 kilowatts is what they claim but of course that's directly proportional to the amount of coolant flow that you have and to the um, to the temperature of the coolant and um, I would say that ours uh, um, it's supposed to be 8 kilowatts it's not quite that much I would say it does push out more heat than our 5 kilowatt forced air diesel heater at full blast so it's probably gonna be more than 5 kilowatts but less than 8 kilowatts so let's call it like 6 or 7 kilowatts that should be about right it does push out a lot of air like the fan is really powerful at full speed and it's also really quite loud but um, and but that's a you know that's a good thing that it pushes out a lot of air if we need to try something we just throw it in the corner over there where the heater is and any shoes or clothes that you put in there are gonna be dry in a matter of just uh, minutes so the fourth thing is that I noticed that it uses a lot of electricity it draws at full power around 10 amps all the time and um, for most people this is not going to be a problem because your engine is going to be running and your alternator is putting out power but for us we don't have really huge uh, alternators and we have lithium batteries so uh, quite often especially in winter when we start motoring we could actually use all of the power um, to charge the batteries and this just means that we have essentially 10 amps less um, <coughs> to put into the batteries so uh, it's not a huge deal, but I think if this was like a, maybe a, like more of a quality product or if it had a fan that used less electricity, I think you might be able to you know produce a fan that pushes out the same amount of air but uses a little bit less, maybe like five or six amps. But this one draws 10 amps pretty much uh, all the time. And uh, then the final thing with, with this amount of load, or with this amount of electricity that it uses um, the wiring that came with the heater wasn't really that thick so I would advise you to you know if you have a longer wiring run then uh, cut the wires um, close to the heater and replace with uh, something a little bit thicker that's um, what I did personally that was it I wanted to make a separate video about this heater because uh, I get a lot of questions about heating your boat, insulation and so on and I know there's a lot of people who watch these videos who are interested in that kind of stuff and maybe they want to potentially install something like that in their own boat but uh, I do realize that um, for a lot of people you know if you just want to watch the cool sailing footage and so on th this one wasn't maybe wasn't uh, one of those videos but we have some of those videos coming up in the future. Thanks for watching. See you all next time. Bye bye.